So now we have set up AWS CLI on our local computer. And as we've seen, we've been using our credentials. Now, a very common use case is to also run the AWS CLI on EC2. Now, there's a bad way of doing it, and there's a right way of doing it. And I do not want you to even get a try with the bad way. So the bad way is what? You could just run the same command AWS configure on EC2, just like we did, and it will work. And you'll put your personal credentials. But that is super insecure. So here is me getting on my security hat again. I just don't want to be your dad on this, but I kind of have to say it. Never, ever, ever put your personal credentials on an EC2 machine. It's really, really bad. Why? Because your personal credentials, as the name indicates, are personal and only begun on your personal computer. So anything that's personal, you never put on an EC2. You actually never own an EC2. If your EC2 machine somehow is compromised, so is your personal account. And if your EC2 is shared between many people and other people use your credentials, then they may perform AWS actions in your stead and really impersonate you. If they do something really bad, who is going to be pointed the finger at? It will be you, okay? So for EC2, you never ever put your credentials there. Don't even think about it. There is a better way. And now it's time to introduce it to you. It's called AWS IAM roles. So we've seen IAM roles before, right? But now we are going to concretely play with them. So there was IAM users, IAM groups, and IAM roles. So IAM roles are attached to applications or EC2 instances. And IAM roles can come with a policy. And that policy, basically, we can define exactly what the EC2 instance should be able to do. And by default, it has no rights. So now the diagram is that on the AWS network, we'll have EC2 instances, and it wants to communicate to the AWS account using the CLI. But now the AWS instance will have an IAM role. And that basically IAM role, there's going to be some magic happening. You don't even have to worry about it. But then your AWS account will check the credentials and the permission of that role. And that makes everything more secure. You've never put your credentials on the EC2 instance because it has its own role. Okay? So EC2 instances will use this profiles and roles automatically without any additional configuration. This is the best practice on AWS and you should 100% do this all the time. The exam is very clear about it. Anytime there is an EC2 instance that needs to perform something, never ever think about putting your credentials there. Always use IAM roles. That should be automatic in your head. So let's go ahead and practice this. Okay, so I am in my console and the one thing I want to do is go to EC2. I'll also open a new tab just so we can keep things in sync. And in this tab, I will go and open IAM. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is go to our running instances. And as you can see, there's no running instance. It's because I'm in the wrong region. So let's make sure I go back to EU Paris. And here are my running instances. Okay, one of them is running. So what I have to do is SSH into it. So I'll go and find the public IP and I will SSH into it. For this, I will run the SSH command and specify the right IP. Okay, I am in my AWS instance. Now, if I type AWS, as you can see, because we have used Amazon Linux 2, it's actually nice and we don't need to install the AWS CLI on it. It is actually already installed. If you do AWS minus minus version, we should get an information about the version of the CLI. As you can see, it's a little bit older from what we've installed on our computers, but it will still work just fine. So the command is working. Now, as we can see before, we can do AWS configure. But as I said, it is really, really bad to put anything in the AWS access key ID. So I'll click on enter because we don't want to put anything. Same, we will not put our AWS secret access key. We'll press enter again. Now the default region name though, I can definitely say EU West 3 because this is where my instance is from. And then default output format, I'll press on enter. So as you noticed, I have not put my access key ID and my secret access key there. Okay, that's it for the security bits. So now what if we want to run AWS S3 LS? Press enter. Now we get unable to look at credentials. And it sort of misleads you into saying you can configure credentials by running AWS configure. Now, as we said, if we run AWS configure, it prompts us to put our own personal credentials, so that's bad. There is actually a better way, is to use instance roles. So if we look at this instance, basically it does not have any IAM role. You can see that this instance has no IAM role attached to it. Now we can attach an IAM role and we will do so right now. So in IAM, 
I will go to roles and I will create a role. Now for this, I need to select the type of trust entity. I want to attach this role to an AWS service. As you can see, you can attach role to a lot of different AWS services. Basically roles in AWS are used so that you can have any service have its own set of permissions. So for us, the most too popular is gonna be EC2 and Lambda, but for now we're dealing with EC2. So I click on EC2, click on next, and then we can look for policies. So these are managed policies we can attach and let's just filter for S3. So we'll just look at S3 and there is an S3 read only access. So I'll go ahead and attach this S3 read only access. Then I will click on next on the blue button right here. The role name, I'll call it my first EC2 role. And the role description is whatever you want. I will say allows EC2 to make calls to Amazon S3. And these are read only calls, okay? Because we have attached the read only access. That sounds right. I click on next. And now my first EC2 role has been created. It is right here in the last line. So let's go back to the EC2 management console, right click, and you can do instance settings, attach, replace IAM role. So we'll attach the my first EC2 role that gets obviously um, suggested right here, or we could have created an IAM role straight from this console. I'll click on apply and it says IAM role operation succeeded. Click on close and now if we scroll down again, we can see that there is an IAM role attached to our instance. It is my first EC2 role. Now let's go back to our console and type AWS S3 LS and as you can see now, the command has succeeded. We can see the bucket of Stefan and the other bucket of Stefan. We can also go down deeper and make sure that the we can list files within my bucket and it seems to work. I can see my beach, my coffee, and my index.html file. So all these seems to work. But what if we try to do something a little bit tricky, such as creating a bucket? So it was S3, make buckets, S3, and then I'll just have some random stuff. Press enter. And now we get a make bucket failed. It says an error has occurred. Access denied. When calling the create bucket operation. So that means that our EC2 role is not permissioned enough to do a make bucket operation. And that makes sense, right? Because if we click on it, the only policies I have attached to it is the Amazon S3 read only access. So now it really becomes obvious that we can obviously attach to our EC2 instance the permissions it actually needs to perform its job. An address uh, EC2 instance does not need administrator rights. It usually is an application and will interact with a few AWS components. And so we could tailor a policy just for that instance. So obviously we have to see how we can edit these policies and stuff. We'll have a lab on this in the next lecture, but for now I can just attach a new policy. And if we look at maybe the S3 full access, which is quite a strong policy, I'll apply it. Now our EC2 instance has read only access and full access. So now if we run this make buckets command, as we can see, it's still access denied. So this is another very interesting thing about IAM. When you apply a policy, it can take a little bit of time for it to be effective. So it's not immediate. Things have to replicate in the global infrastructure of AWS. So that's expected. Just keep on trying to run the command. And as you can see, I just ran it. And now the make bucket operation succeeded. If I do AWS S3, remove buckets now to just remove that bucket, this should work as well. Okay, everything worked. So this is it just to get you a starter on how to create IAM roles. This IAM role can be attached to as many EC2 instances as you want, but an EC2 instance can only have one IAM role at a time. And IAM role are used to permission EC2 instances so that they can perform API calls on your behalf. So as you can see here, my EC2 instance was able to do a lot of things, but never once have I put my credentials on the EC2 instance, and that's much better. So I hope that was helpful. In the next lecture, we'll do a much deeper dive into AWS policies.